Okay, wow. It's good to see all of you here during lunch. So, um, yeah, so good afternoon. Welcome to the, ses to the session on gamification and also game-based learning. So um, we are hoping to explore and also teach you about the games in teaching and learning today. And um, please bear with us, because this is the first time that we're running um, on this topic. So um, we're just here to explore and discuss it as well. So um, here, what we are going to talk about today. So um, we will first start with some um, understanding and gamification, and then we'll get some inspiration from my previous or like um, the work of others. And then we will talk about the game mechanics and some core principles in um, game design. And then I'll also let you know about some tools that you can start to gamify your learning as well. So um, at the end, there will be a hands-on session about like um, 15 minutes. So um, for you to start um, brainstorming for your teaching or um, for your daily routine as well. So let's start. Have anyone of you played this before? Any? Good. OK. Monopoly. I'm trying to bring back the memories about this one, Pictionary as well. No? This is like um, you get the topic, like the noun or the activity, and then you draw it, and then you let others to guess it. How about this one? This is my favorite board game, Kakashan. Like nice one. So um, this one, Mario, Mario, yeah. And also, I think this is the last one, Overcoat with your friends. Like you want to kill each other. Yes. So um, have any one of you played um, a game in the past twenty-four hours? Can I know? Like in the past day, have you ever played a game? Yeah. Okay. Anyone? No. Okay. So before we start, um, I want you to have a time to think about a game that you like playing. So this could be any game, board game, video game, mobile game, whatever game that you want to try. I mean, you you have to play. So um, take a moment and think about why this particular game is like motivating you to keep playing, and why do you love it? So um, as you sink in. Uh, as you can see on the desk, there are a piece of paper with 30 circles. I think most, some of you have tried it before, but then I still want you to try it. So the instruction is very, very simple. In three minutes' time, you have to complete as many circles um, as you can. So draw some recognizable objects or anything that you want to draw. So you have three minutes on that one, and then we can see um, how many um, circles that you can see. So the time starts now. If you don't have the sheet of paper, then you can just um, let me know, and I can pass you that one as well. So try to draw on the sheet of paper as many things as you can, like a smiley or whatever that you, you want to try to draw. You have around two minutes left.
Okay, ten, nine, eight, seven, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so now, how do you feel? And I want you to like look at each other's work for a minute or so, so you have you have time to like explore what others are drawing as well. So please just take a minute and exchange for a while. And and also how see how many circles have you completed? Any of you have completed all the circles? Thirty. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Uh, okay, so I saw some of you are drawing inside a circle, some are maximizing the use of the circle. So um, I'll let you see my previous students did in the circles, it's like... Um, so these are some of those students, so they draw a bicycle, some got a sun, a ping pong, washing machine, a rain, glasses, uh, I don't know what is it, a snowman, and yeah, and also a car, hot balloon, and also um, some trees. So um, what I want to bring out in this quick activity is like um, my key goal for this little warm up too is to ice break sometimes, and then also um, to let you know how about about how to break the rules and also combine the circles. So um, the instruction might be too simple or not clear, but then that's how the creativity works there. So um, you can think about whether this is good for you to keep the instruction very simple, or do you want to be more explicit by giving specific steps? So this is just a warm up for that one. And then um, when I saw when I first saw these two terms back in like few years before, I thought they were both talking about like games or try to enhance teaching and learning by playing games. But then they are actually more than that, and they have some sets, a bit of difference between them. So. Um, so yes, so gamification is more about um, trying to add the game elements into a non-game context. So this is not a game, but then you try to add the game elements into a daily context or a non-game context. So you encourage specific behaviors and also try to change students' behaviors. And then you provide feedback and you pro provide um, the progress tracking as well. So this is relatively easier and also cost effective um, to do gamification because it doesn't need you to um, create a new game, but you only need to add some game elements to the specific task. So um, for example, um, to make it easier, so for example, point giving points, giving badges, and also leaderboards. So these are some motivators for your students to, um, to um, pr pursue that specific goal and also to climb up the ladder for, for the task. So um, these are the three typical ones. Um, and then for game-based learning, it's actually more than gamification, so it goes a step further. It has, it's actually um, trying to build a game or using an existing game to enhance your learning. So you either have to build your own game or you can use an existing game to um, perform that um, game-based learning. So um, you will have to implement by um, some mechanics here. So that will be um, the game mechanics that I will be um, talking through later on. And then you have the gameplay, so the instruction and also the storytelling and the overall immersive experience that students will um, go through. And then the learning, learning content is most important because it will be setting the learning objective for the entire game. So that will be the starting point for you before um, planning the entire game. So, um, yes. So, um, to make it simpler, this is like a hopscotch. So um, for, for it to be just a game, then you just need to um, throw an object onto the floor, and then you just have to hop through um, all the tens, 10 ones. But then for, if you want to gamify it for game-based learning, what you need to do is to um, have a learning objective. For example, um, you will be teaching odd and even numbers. So that is the learning objective for your game. And then you try to um, set some rules. For example, you need the player to jump on the um, odd number by one, one foot. And then you, if you um, jump on the even number, you have to land on two feet as well. So there's rules that is learning objective, and there are some gameplay in there. For the gamification, that is um, the one I talked about. Um, the first one is easier. So you just need to put some um, like motivation from time to time. And then you need to add a task for your student or yourself. To, um, to achieve. So whenever you achieve something, you will progress. As you progress, you will meet some milestones. 
So that is how you are going to motivate the player to get to the end and also achieve the goal as well. So this is the um, three um, differences between these. So of course, we are not here just to play. And I, I need to like include some kind of like um, um, education theory as well. So this is actually the, the key thing. So um, in this um, play theory, it's actually talking about fate, progress, power, identity, the self, the imagery, and the frivolity as well. So these are always happening inside the game. And for example, fate, um, whenever you draw the cards or you, you throw a dice, so there's always some kind of this element in the game as well. So this play theory is actually um, connecting to the learning as well. So um, if you have time, you can go back to the slides and um, have a look at, at these seven rhetorics as well. So this is how um, you can connect playing with high education. So um, I'm going to go through some um, examples. So for example, this budget game. Oh, for, I think I will go to this one. So this is a mini budget game for our social word class. So I used Miro, this one. As you can see, it's the large one. So um, what we want to achieve is letting students know how difficult the elderly in Hong Kong is living. For example, they, they count on the, the monthly, I mean, the subsidy from the government. So they have specific money, and then they need to um, spend money and also work as well. So we gave them, each of them, there will be some money, and then they pick an avatar, and depends on which job they are choosing. For example, dishwasher or the security guard, they will get different type, different amount of money. And here is like a simple flow. You will, you will let your students know about um, the details of each one. But we do, do not give them this board. We just ask them to um, go to this board, to their own board. For example, each of them will occupy one board, and then they will just listen to our, to our um, description for the flow. So once you have the flow, this is like a storytelling. For example, um, you, you want to go to work, then you need to decide where do you live. And then the monthly grocery and also some like emergency medical appointment, your granddaughter is birthday, do you want to spend or not? And then you will also get the level of happiness as well. So this is how you are trying to um, add some game elements to the, to, the, to the learning content as well. So by the end of the, um, by the end of the, the, the game, so many of them actually go have, have nothing in their wallet. So they are actually knowing how difficult the elderly are living as well. So yeah, so this is one of the example. Um, this one is another one. For example, they are just, um, so this is from the Faculty of Education. They, they are trying to use like a comic style for the students to um, go through different things on the Moodle as well. So this is how they create some kind of assignment by having some storyline and also some prompt there. So this is just to like um, spice up the work so that it gets less boring. And this one is actually a board game for sustainability course. So they focus on human consumption, sustainability, and also um, our way of um, I mean, using the resources um, on Earth. So this is actually this box of board game here, like um, life of ordinary people. So it actually starts from this. So it's like a scratch um, a branching and also there's some content as well. But then eventually you will get there. So um, I can also show you this one as well. Welcome to the basic mode tutorial of Loop, Life of Wood. Choose to work. You will gain coins from the work area, but will also lose happiness based on your selected career. In basic mode, your career is intern. If you choose to buy, you are going to pay coins to get materials from the buy area. The number of coins you paid determines the materials quality, which is indicated by the white dots on the top. You can buy up to three materials in a single turn. Yeah, so this game is actually, you have to decide um, what kind of activity you want to teach your student, what kind of materials can um, students choose from. So this is actually, you have to plan all the content before you have the game. And also, um, this is a way of um, making students know how sustainability works. For example, like um, you talk about like the overproduction. So um, you, you also talk about the overtime of working. So even if you want to get 
to win this game, you you want to get more happiness, but then actually happiness need to be purchased by money. So you need to get a balance between them, and then you you can you can do different activities at the same time as well. So um, yes. Uh, this one is a simple one, like for design thinking. You just need to um, build some kind of like objects here and then let students to go through different process of thinking about um, what they want to create as well. So this is a mini game as well. And then they, they actually did um, the product there and they fold, folded for the favorite kind of um, product he here as well. Um, this one is just by using Google Sheets as well. So we printed out some um, some tasks for students to work on, and then they also need to bring a, a laptop here. So they got a sheet of paper from us and also the Excel file. So when, when they type in the answer here, it actually goes to the leaderboard here. So this is how you can um, utilize the Google Sheet and also a piece of paper to, to um, conduct like a mini, mini class activity as well. So you just need to... Um, make some simple calls on Google Sheet, and then um, you can have an like, interactive workshop here as well. So people will start to um, work on it and also get more points from here as well. Uh, OK. So this is as well. Um, for example, Lego. Um, this is the Lego series play box that you can also introduce to your class. For example, I think drama or some general education can also do this. So um, I actually asked students to s give them a theme that is, um, what's your definition or feeling about home? Because most of them are exchange students, so that we ask them your sense of belonging. So we, we ask them to create something. So each of them actually create different piece of thing, and then they have to um, build it, have to explain it, and also they will put it on the specific place that they want to put. So they will also explain why they're putting on the side, why they're putting in the center as well. And then they will um, check with each other, and then they, this can be a good um, class activity as well. So you can see they are like picking from the chairs and having like a guide, guidance sheets there as well. So um, this is another one. Oh. Um, so these photos are um, ice-breaking activity for them. So these photos are actually um, generated by AI, and then I just print, print, print them out as photographs. And then um, I just spread it out, and students can walk around. So you can see they are walking around. And then they will get to decide um, which card to pick based on my question. And then they will have to um, present to us and also their classmate as well. And then after that, after that um, session, we also utilize that photograph to conduct a blind drawing activity as well. So um, they, they are like sitting in pairs and then they, they need to draw it and then they are like describing um, the thing to each other. So this is also one of them. And this one is a group discussion um, topic, but then we, we need them to, to put in their personal input. So then I just draw a roadmap here and then they have to stick where they are from and also um, the, the answer based on the question. So this is how you can um, make use of like a whiteboard and also some post-it notes and some questions to um, have a meaningful um, discussion with the student as well. And this one, so this one, I brought an instant camera print, print printer and then asked them to um, pick a photo or go outside to take a photo. And then like 10 minutes or so, we asked them to send the um, photos to Google Drive, and then I print it out for them. And then they will be sticking there like a mini um, gallery. So they will be um, talking about um, why they're taking this, why they're picking this, and also they will also comment on each other's um, photographs as well. Okay, so this is scene making. I think, um, yeah, so this is like um, cutting from my books and also some poetry. And then they will, they will, um, they will finish a product like this, a mini magazine of themselves. So this is also kind of game. So um, for game mechanics, we usually have um, the three main types. That is um, the, the mechanics itself, that the action, the behaviors, and the control that are afforded to the players. The dynamic is the interaction between the game and also the players. And the aesthetic is how it, it will have the desirable emotion 
emotional responses developing player and also how is it feels overall for the experience as well. So these are um, the engagement experience what well, the key. So you have to have a good flow, have a balance about the difficulty. You have the player agency, the retention that you want this, the players to keep playing and then emotional connection and replayability as well. So um, on that part, I want to introduce this difficulty curve as well. So you can see the difficulty is easy here and hard. And then this is player skills or resources from low to high. So um, this curve is like a flooring curve. So when it gets too, um, too easy, but then um, the player skills is high, then the players will get boring. But then if the player is having a high low skills, but then it, the, the difficulty of the game is too hard, then they will get frustrated and like they will give up the game. So this is the difficulty curve that you can also um, remember in when you're thinking about the player engagement. So um, some study actually mapped the learning mechanics with the game mechanics. So you can see some of them are actually appearing in both sides. For example, assessment, assessment, uh, ownership, and also um, role play, feedback, for example, like that. So to put it in a simpler way, there are these six types of um, game mechanics from strategies, from action, progression, exploration, role playing, and resource management. So these are the um, key game mechanics that you will find in a, in a game. And to break it down, these are the game mechanics that I've picked for you because I think these are most likely um, some useful one for you to, to plan um, in, when, when you're ha doing, doing your game. So, um, so for example, um, usually we have lock and unlock, we have um, eliminate, we have races, scoring, and also achievement badges. So um, these are the things. I will also give you a sheet that you can keep later on. So um, just remember this kind of game mechanics that you can think about. And for example, I took this um, traditional Maja as an example. So um, actually before this one, I haven't thought about it. But then when I start to map it, and it is actually con uh, connected to the collect and trade. So you have to collect and trade this t the tiles with your opponents. And then you actually get the bonus point from getting the, the one with flowers, I think. So you, you get an extra one. And then you also count the money with um, like a specific way. And then you turn taking. So each of you will take turns to, to do it. And then the tokens and also scoring for at the end of the game when you will get the money or tokens. So player must balance between forming your own winning and also blocking your opponents by discarding the tiles that do not help them. So it's actually like a strategic game for you to play as well. So this is one of the activity. And when you are designing your game, um, we have a flow here. So usually we start with define, defining. So you start to um, ask yourself what is the internet, intended learning outcome and the technical requirement that you have, and also you can explore. And then you start to plan the main plot, or are there any storytelling, or um, what kind of storyboard do you want the gameplay to be? So you start to think about the rules. So this is the, in the pre-development stage. So why is it a game? So why can't you just teach a student, or um, why you want to include that in as a game, but not just as teaching materials? So you have to ask yourself several questions before you start actually to develop that, that, that game. And prototyping, as you can see, I've just like used some paper and um, printouts for the mock-up. And I'll also show you one extra mock-up later on. So this is how you start to um, make your game tangible and also visualize it for you to improve. And then you build it with materials, with the, all, all, the, as, all the graphics or any learning content that you need to um, include. So, um, and then you test it, and then you start to launch it with your friends or your students. So you pilot it, and then you will have the feedback, and you can go back to the um, um, development part. So um, some people would love to use Figma for um, the, game, the game prototyping. And I can also show you some Figma. 
Oh, this one. So this is Figma, and I have um, found like a fla flapping bird, a fish, is it bird? Yeah. So they actually use this flapping bird as a uh, yes. So they actually use Figma to um, do the prototyping. So for example, from um, the the first one to the to, to the game over one, and then um, they are, they actually get the pipes, the bird movement here. So you can actually plan everything here and try to do a game demo as well. So Figma is quite useful if you want to digitalize your game and also plan for your game. But uh, what I want to tell you is, is also, um, you can also do it with um, paper and cut out. So this is uh, a mock-up that I've done for like engineering. So you can see there are different um, building materials, for example, what, what is that? Uh, some concrete, for example. So we got um, the game concept first, and then we print out this one. So um, this is the QR code for um, our initial uh, idea is have to scan the code, and that will appear with an AR, um, AR information about that particular materials. And then you can see here will be some um, icon iconic Hong Kong um, building structure. So um, our game is like um, having this. So I drill um, these kind of um, Hong Kong iconic um, sketches and then just put it there. So it's pretty easy for you to just um, combine um, the two of them and then to form a game. So this game is actually from from this idea. So you will start from um, having the game flow, a simple one, for picking a card, use app to calculate the building construction materials needed, and then the building infrastructure and also the counter score. So we eventually improve the game by um, setting the table, how, the, how is it for the player area as well. And then we try to um, put it into here for more like um, detailed um, information. So this is how you are going to um, plan and also um, develop your game. So these are the tools that um, you can actually um, use, and I will go through them one by one. Um, Canvas, if you want to do the badges on Canvas, then you can actually go to, for example, this course. I'll just go to um, badges. And you can see I've set this like level one complete the Mantinita. So when I click in, um, I've already got this batch for a level one. So this is like a, an, an image that I upload. And the requirement for getting this batch for the student is to complete um, the Mantinita. What is the Mantinita? The Mantinita is this one. So whenever they have opened or finished this module, then they will get that one. So for you, for example, you can set up a quiz or test, and then you can also make the quiz like um, available for the badges. So for example, if the student um, passed the test, then you, they can get the badges as well. So they will see different badges that you create for them. So this is one of the ways to motivate your student. Uh, actually, for my previous work, we, we actually have like three or four badges for one course. And then once they collected four badges, then we give them one day extension for their homework assignment. But they are very happy for this, even for one day. So yeah, you can think about that. Uh, Kahoot, I think most of you also heard about it. It's like Mentimeter. So uh, I'm not going to go deep into that. But then you can see, um, for example, you, you can make it um, self-paced or uh, a live one. So for example, uh, this one is a self-paced one. OK, I'm a fast author. I don't know, but OK. OK, for example, this one. So what I want to show you is that um, Kahoot, except that you can use it in class, but then you can also create a quiz or a game for students to do it after class as well. So that is a self-paced one. Same with Mentimeter. And then uh, we talk about 
we talked about Google Sheet just now. Uh, the Google Form. So I think I'm not sure how many of you also realize that library actually has a escape game during Halloween. Anyone play that in the library? Oh, they actually used Google Form to build that digital um, escape game as well. But then I think I don't have that knowledge to win that game. But then it's doable for um, a, uh, a Google Form. So um, I've also included this in the in the information sheet that I'm going to send you. So this is actually um, like you need the students to complete them one by one or like as a session. So when they um, got through all the questions correctly, they will get some like notes at the end or they can get a picture at the end. So they will kind of like escape this kind of game. So you can think about what kind of content you want your students to, um, to read, to think about as well. So this is a Harry Potter one by um, online people. So yes. So um, H5P is a very useful and handy, um, handy, handy one as well. So um, they have different interactions. So if you want to create, for example, uh, uh, find a hotspot for your like canvas. So um, which one of the berries is named after a town in Turkey? Hmm. Okay. All right. It's cherries. <laughs> okay. So um, imagine you can put up your own image there, and then you can ask students to point at the correct answer as well. So H5P actually has different examples that you can use for um, for um, for your teaching as well. So the common ones that I used before are like find multiple hotspots. And then also um, this one as well. Uh, okay. So this one is um, before and after. So this is like a map of before and after. But how I use it before is like um, um, having the question here, and then the answer will be at the back, for example, like that. So you can think about some creative ways to use some like H5P examples here. And it's free. They also have um, they also have um, the interactive video as well. If you want to create video with some interactions in between, so you can see some dots here. So those are actually the quiz as the student will be watching um, the video as well. So yeah, so they will have some quiz here. So this is also one of the feasible way. And um, what else? Okay, so. Um, this one, this is um, G Develop. Um, is a online platform for you to create the game. I haven't really um, figured this out, but then my student before figured this out and told me it's quite easy. So this is the example for. Uh, so this is like an inter uh, intercultural like culture class before. So um, they developed this Hong Kong dim sum class. So I'll play with um, this one. So they actually have the storyline and also the graphic on their own, and then they will do the semi dim sum. So as I understand from them, it requires no coding. So um, you just have to figure out um, the logistic of the the game. Okay, so um, this is like a very simple one. Yeah, I mean, this is very simple, but uh, yeah, okay, I, I gave up this one. And then um, another one will be flat pea. So this is like a flat pea bird one. So the thing may, might not be too innovative, but then the way students utilize it to um, promote Hong Kong culture is our assignment criteria. So this is how we use game as one of the assignments as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so remember this one. Uh, G developed, they have different games for you to, to make. Okay. 
So, um, and then we talk about, uh, Mira, we talk about just now, uh, this one, oh no. Yeah, so for example, this one as well. So you can um, create different storyline and also different boards for your, um, for your student. And sometimes, for some of this one requires several um, like HTML coding, but then um, the idea is that we try to gamify um, how to teach adaptability to students. So it's actually like asking them to do a self-test. Uh, okay. So um, there will be different answers based on the score they, they get. So this is like an AQ, AQ self-test. And then another one will be uh, this one. It's also having storyline and then just some questions in between. So when they get to stage one, you can see um, the idea of level. Uh, okay. Okay, we'll, we'll try the, this one. So there are different um, answers for them to choose from. Uh, yes. And then they will progress to the next level. So this is um, another um, sample. And then this one is a monopoly like adaptation. Then we also teach different concepts like downloading, factual listening, um, different kind of communication skills there. And then um, they will be rolling the dice later. And then they will get different questions. Yeah, so this is also a simple way of gamifying the content as well. Okay, so get a town, get a town, um, get a town. So um, you can also create your own space. This is like an online, online version of Zoom, but then um, it's actually having like a, a, the avatar here, so you can see me. It's actually customized. So um, this is the whole map. But then if you look closer, then you can control by control by the arrows. So for example, um, I, I go to the impact garden. So when I go into this space, you can make every object as like a link or file. Then you press X to interact. Then it should be showing a slide. So yes. So um, this is how you're going to navigate the map and also um, what will be inside, for example, like that. Okay, so, um, and then you can also see different pictures. So the idea here is um, how you're going to interact with object to open a, a particular um, link or files. So yeah, I'll, I'll go out first. Okay, and then you can also use it for some kind of presentation. For presentation, for example, you can you can have um, have a map of this room. So this will be um, the the room setting, and then this will be each booth. So you can see it goes to grayscale. Whenever you walk into the, some spaces in grayscale, so only the pe people inside the grayscale can listen and talk to you. So if there are someone there, they can actually appear on the screen as well. They can talk to you. So this is um, like the poster, they, they will be, they will be uh, presenting. And then this one can be a mirror board for them to leave some comments or suggestions. And then this can be the evaluation feedback, I think. Yeah, so this will be a feedback form. So um, yeah, so there are different, different groups. go back to the main hall. So this is get a town. Um, this one as well is also similar concept. So you can actually ask all your students to sit here and listen to you or like have some group discussion. And then they can go into a different space 
for um, different presentations. So you can see that the styles are actually similar and you can edit. And the free version now only accept um, tens um, people to go at the same time. So now, okay, just right. So um, you have 15 minutes to work on this um, hands -on activity. So if you are not teaching any course this semester or you don't want to work on your course, you, you want to work something on your own. For example, um, my fitness, my reading habit or like eating habit as well. So you try to gamify a daily task. So you will think about which task and then you try to brainstorm which game elements that you want to apply. For example, um, if I do exercise every day, then I get one point. And then after I get 20 points, I can get a McDonald's for like a weekend trip. So um, you try to identify some game elements and then design um, different game gamification um, features. For um, option B, if you want to do something for your course teaching, then you can try to think about a specific concept or theory or some um, um, topic that you want to um, let students learn from that game. So you select that topic and then you define one, two, three specific learning outcome. And then you try to think about what should the students be learning, what should be the rules, and how you want the storytelling for that game to be. So um, you can just sketch it out or like just point out some keywords or even doing some mind mapping there as well. So um, you actually get the back of this one. So uh, when, when, uh, for option A and B, you can also share the same, same sheet of paper. It's just different wordings. So you can try to think about what uh, objective you want to do and then select the topic or the task and then think about the learning goals and or the ultimate goals for, um, for example, your dieting habit as well. Game mechanics, you can choose from the sheet of paper from here and then the idea of the game as well. So you can try to um, visualize and also brainstorm something for yourself now till, yeah, for the last 15 minutes. And um, I'll also give you this one. So this is actually like a, like a, uh, Like a like a cheat sheet um, of this workshop, so you get um, you get the QR code for the slides, you get the uh, mechanics on there, and then you also get the tools at the bottom of the sheet, and then at the at the back of it is the task of this um, this activity. So you can try it, and even if you do not want to do it now, then you can try to brainstorm some ideas for for you to um, add some game elements for your for your. Um, um, teaching or daily task. So uh, you can also let me know if you have any question. In, so we have 15 minutes on this. And as you're working on it, I can also pass this around so you can have a sense of like what this game is. So you can pass around this game.
So as you are working on it, I also want to uh, So if we're still figuring out, so this is like an initial idea. So for example, for drama, so um, I want to have a game for students to um, learn about how to Im improvise the acting. So I'll develop some um, predefined character cards, um, some conflict cards, some dialogue, so they must use this dialogue in the acting. For example, some location or setting, and also some plot, some optional time challenge. So they have to, um, for some of the gameplay would be, um, they have to pick um, one each, and then they need to act something out of that. So this is like how you pick them, and also um, ask the student to um, do something, like acting or performing as well. So this is a um, simple way. Um, this one is similar. So this is like a emotion maze, for example. So um, there will be different emotions, different scenarios, different parts and also motivation as well. So um, as they do some acting by um, improvising here and also um, interacting with the peer, then they can um, progress to the end of the finish line. So these are like two simple way for, for you to um, think about how to gamify a specific topic as well. So this is for drama school, then you can also think about something for your school as well. Anyone already finished their sheet or want to share something or any idea that you want to explore? I don't know how to differentiate the topics and the goals and 
suppose this is the same one, no? Uh, this is like what you want them to learn, and then this is like their goal or like the okay, game so, as well. So in the, in the game, in the game language. So. Yeah. Right. Anything you are planning for? Um, thinking about you know training students on um, the same as building the storytelling techniques. Mm creating some categories like the place, the time, and uh, the event, so they um, just draw the cards mm -hmm. and they have to you know, put the put story, together. Yeah, put these okay. together in a more logical way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You? Anything? Okay. Okay, okay. It's so, with, with music, it's, it's all practical things. Um, it's <laughs> of course, you can award the students for being, being done something well, done something good. But a lot of it is really practical. It, what if it asks so to, to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rather than going to play games, they rather ask them to practice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, it's more for us to do in the visual and the audience. Well, it's, visual it's great to to be you know come across and these things you know that kind of thing. Yeah. If it's Maybe like you can encourage students to have cross, diff I mean cross instrument performance or practice. No. Maybe you can design things for using music classes. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, they can they can mm. play on the smart board and yeah, they yeah. they have all the kind of bodily movement thing. Is it possible it's to, more to like give all the like motive? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You would like to motivate them, of course. Give them a rhythm or motive. I was thinking it's 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 cards, but they, they, I don't know how the teachers teach, but they, they have that ways already. I mean, mm, yeah. The way we were we were taught, mm -hmm. and then how we how we uh, pass it on. Mm -hmm. That's uh, I, mean, I don't know. Much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they can of course create background music for games. Anything you're planning for? Good. Good at English. Okay. <laughs> so how are you going to achieve that goal for your have a common conversation for twenty minutes every day. Every day. Okay. <laughs> so how would you track it or like how would you reward yourself for that? A great dinner <laughs> a <Okay>. month <laughs> if I okay. can Yeah, so for next semester, I'm teaching a modern art course, like a general education one. And I was thinking just uh, a game where they, like everyone gets one card, one style, like art style, I don't know, or whatever. And then they get one, one card with a topic, like or, or an object or a person that they have to draw. Then I give them some time to draw the um, either digitally or on a paper to draw them thing in that style, but then I do it in style, whatever. And then once after 10 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever, uh, collect that version, and then all the students have to guess each other's um, art style. Uh, maybe several rounds with some points or catches or getting the card. Yeah, we'll see you after. Okay. How are you going to like um, do those cards? Um, probably like just Canva. <laughs> uh, yeah, it could be Canva or just uh, print them out. Mm. Okay, oh, nice. Looking forward to that. Show me after you have done that next yeah. semester. How about you? I'm a student mm. in performing mm. arts and the uh, media is giving me the hand to the uh, let the students know how to transfer the emotions using the facial expression mm. or the eye contact mm. and so they maybe can get some new students standing on the stage and then he can only see the words or the emotions mm. thing. and the other students can guess and uh, the students on the stage can 
get a point to any different next level for a harder run or mask, mask or uh, more complex emotions. Also, uh, they can in the process they can learn um, emotions, characteristics, and the differentiate mm. and uh, you know the influences of this. Good one. <laughs> Which school are you from? Like, I'm the master student ah, in the I see, I see. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> what about you? Anything that you want to gamify or planning to do? I think it could be faster if I had my learning objectives. Oh, yeah, sure. I guess if I had that, I could let my brain... Like mapping. Yeah. Okay. But I think because I have to think about my learning objectives, it's... Oh, it's that like, useful for you as well. Okay, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm using the, the free version for that, so I think uh, after this one they will ask you, do you want to upgrade then you just don't want to upgrade. Oh, you can Yeah, because I'm using the free version. Okay, okay so um, it's almost time, so um, that's pretty much about today, but then um, I hope all of you have learned something and take away um, something and try to <coughs> gamify your learning as well. So um, just to have a little promotion, so as you can see here are some like 3D printed dice, which are not too in good shape yet, but then eventually they will be like a, like a rolling dice as well. So uh, we have a workshop in December, mid-December, uh, I think 12, December 12. So uh, we will have a 3D printing workshop here, and then we set the quota to six people because it takes time to like print them out, and also um, this is the first time for us to run it. So um, we kept the um, like the particip participants to six people. So if you're interested in using like 3D printer, even for your even for your game or other uses, then you can just register later from the e-newsletter. So hope you have a good day ahead, and thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, and also, feedback. Feedback. Thanks. Thanks. So you can also approach us whenever you have some like game ideas, and we can try to explore that together as well. Thank you.